With new technology and software development constantly hitting the market, I can get how it can feel overwhelming to try and keep up. I mean, there's a lot of great new technology out there and so many possible new things to learn, like AI tools or ChatGPT, which could possibly help developers. But I've sort of realized before I get too caught up in all the new technology and stress myself out about AI taking over my career, I need to take a couple of steps back. I need to focus on the fundamentals or on the core of what it means to be a program and that knowledge isn't wrapped up in a new programming language a new framework or a new ai tool that being said i've decided i'm gonna take 2023 to really hone in on my craft as a software developer recognize the gaps in my education and work on filling in those gaps and thanks to notion who is the sponsor of today's video i put together a solid plan by creating this dashboard of all the material that i want to study in 2023 and that material consists of three things. Number one, computer design and architecture. Number two, object-oriented programming principles. And number three, system design. These are the three major buckets I'm going to be focusing on in 2023. Now, why am I focusing on learning these things versus learning a new AI tool or a new framework like React or a new programming language? Well, a lot of programmers, including myself, they want to jump into the hot new technology, but they don't want to focus on the fundamentals or even go back to relearn the fundamentals when that is necessary. I've realized that I have cracks in my foundation as a software developer, and I realized that I need to go all the way back to the basics, back to the zeros and ones, and work on filling in those cracks. So let's go ahead and dive into each one of these topics that I'll be studying in 2023, and while I'll be studying each one. All right, so to kick things off, I'll be studying computer design and architecture, as you can see here in my Notion dashboard. Why am I going back to computer design and architecture and learning these things? as somebody who has uh, so many years of experience in the industry. The reason is for the majority of my programming education and career, I've been focusing on the high level things, the programming languages, the frameworks, the tools. And when you first start learning as a programmer, especially as a self-taught programmer, it makes sense to start here because this is what you're gonna be doing in your day-to-day -day job. And it's just easier to, to start with these things. But after you get familiar with a high-level programming language, a framework, a few tools, a lot of programmers, including myself, encourage you to build a portfolio and start applying for jobs. And don't get me wrong, I think that is fantastic advice and I still encourage you to do that but there's a big gap that a lot of programmers miss out on. And that is really understanding how a computer works, really understanding how the software that they're writing actually runs on a computer. Other than a couple of classes I took a long time ago and just picking up on things throughout my career, I've never taken the time to sit down and fully grasp low level computing to the extent I feel like I should. When I first had this realization not too long ago, that feeling of imposter syndrome sort of started creeping in. And I started to ask myself the question, how have I made it this far in my career without truly grasping how computers run at a low level? But to answer that question, the tools, the programming languages, the frameworks, they've abstracted themselves so far away from the hardware at this point that to have a career in programming nowadays, you don't really need to have a deep understanding of this stuff. And even though I recognize having a deep understanding may not be completely necessary, it will 100% make me a better developer, a better programmer, in the long run, which is why it's important to me to get a better grasp of low level computing and what better way to do this than by building a computer from the ground up. So after a bit of digging and a bit of research online, I came across this book titled The Elements of a Computing System. Now this book is the backbone of a course called NAND to Tetris, which is a free 12 week course that will lead the learner through gradually building the hardware and software hierarchy for a computer system starting with elementary logic gates, all the way up to running Tetris on the machine that they've built. And I've decided to go with this book versus other books for a few reasons. Number one, it's simple and it's structured. When I first decided I want to learn more about computer hardware and architecture, I bought this book, Computer Architecture, A Quantitative Approach. And immediately after opening it up, I was extremely overwhelmed. A lot of technical words, a lot of concepts that I didn't understand. And on top of that, it was over 700 pages long. It really demotivated me to want to dive into computer architecture further until I found the NAND to Tetris course, which breaks things down in a very simple and straightforward way while still helping you get a very solid grasp of low level computing by literally building a computer 
from the ground up. The second reason why I decided to go with this course is that it's taught in over 400 universities, boot camps, and high schools all around the world, so it's very reputable. And number three, the course is completely free. You don't even have to buy the book to do this course. You could watch all the lectures online and get all the tools that you need on their website, nantatetris.org. Now let me show you how I have my Notion dashboard set up to help me tackle this 12-week program. So if you click on this material, computer design and architecture, on this page, I'll have the book that you'll be using for this 12-week course, the purpose, the authors. If you scroll down a little more, there's a bunch of helpful links for accomplishing this 12-week course, a place to take notes, a link to the book if you actually want to buy it, and then I have a Kanban board down here to help guide me through each project week by week. I think Notion is terrific. I use it in every aspect of my life, and I think this is such a great way to lay out all the work ahead of me in 2023 actually commit to my goals, but most importantly, see them through. If you download this Notion dashboard, you'll get all the information that I put in here, as well as all these helpful links and tools for completing this 12-week course. But chances are your 2023 coding goals are different than mine, in which case Notion is super customizable. If you want to use this template as a dashboard and modify it in a way that is the most effective for you, you're more than able to do so, which is another reason why Notion is so great. I have my dashboard set up in a way that's most effective for me by laying out each thing I want to study via the board here in the middle. The left panel that contains my notes, a daily to-do list, and each book I'll need to buy this year. And on the right panel of my dashboard, I have this clock, this calendar view, and this study playlist here. Uh, mostly for aesthetics. Now, when it comes to achieving your goals in Notion, you've really got to lay out your workspace in a way that's pleasing to look at, a place that you're going to want to come back to every day. All right, so enough about my Notion dashboard. Let's talk about the second thing that I plan on studying this year, and that is object-oriented programming principles. Other than gaining a deeper understanding of how computers actually run, I want to focus on more high-level programming principles, such as software architecture and object-oriented programming principles, which is why I plan on reading this book titled The Object-Oriented Thought Process. Now, I've read through a few of these chapters already, and if you're familiar with an object-oriented programming language like Java, you may also be familiar with a lot of the concepts laid out in this book. As I read through this book, I notice I'm familiar with a lot of these things just by working in an object-oriented programming language for so long. However, the biggest reason why I'm going back to object-oriented programming principles and reading through a book like this is to help me associate words to concepts and design practices and principles that I've picked on up over the years, but I have a hard time associating words to those concepts. If that makes sense. Reading through books like this not only help improve your skill set, they also improve your technical vocabulary. One thing I could get better at is I know how to design a piece of code, I know how to write a piece of code, but explaining that in technical terms to other people can sometimes be a bit challenging. If you want to move up in the software development world, being able to explain technical things to not only non-technical people, but also highly technical people is extremely important. Now, when I first picked this book, I intentionally picked up something that was beginner friendly, not only as a resource to recommend for all experience levels, but I didn't want to demotivate myself with heavy material from the get-go. And this book is an easy read and it's only 200 pages long. When it comes to hitting your coding goals, consuming material that is easy for you to digest is really important. Now, if you wanted to take this a step further and read more advanced material on object-oriented programming, you could pick up the book, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, which did come highly recommended from my coworkers and other people online. However, like I said, this is branded as more of an advanced book. And while I don't plan on reading it this year, perhaps sometime in the future, which is why I've put it in the CS book section here in my Notion dashboard under other as books that I may be interested to read in the future. So if you download this template, you can certainly check those books out. All right, so the third and final thing that I'm gonna be focusing on this year is system design, which is why I found this book to help me gain a better understanding of system design titled Designing Data Intensive Applications. This book came highly recommended online for when studying for system design interviews. When it comes to system design, I would say I have a decent understanding of how systems work together, but I don't have that big tech 
that fang level of expertise. And I think having a better understanding of how to build software systems, especially large scale software systems, is important if I want to reach my full potential as a software developer. Matter of fact, the inspiration for wanting to learn system design at a deeper level came from bombing a fang interview I had a few years back. I was asked a question along the lines of how I would build an application and then scale it to millions of users. And while I gave a really basic answer of building an API using something like AWS, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really have the answer the interviewer was looking for, and I definitely fumbled that interview. Now, to be honest, I don't have any plans of working at a big tech company at this point in my career, perhaps sometime in the future, but to fit in with the whole theme of filling in those gaps in my education and honing in on my craft as a software developer, I think this type of material is really important for me to understand. Now on this page of Notion under the helpful link section, I've added a link to a YouTube video called System Design Interview. And just from what I found online, I think this would be a great piece of content to go through alongside this book, which is why I've added it to this Notion page here. So those are the three big things I plan on focusing on this year. Like I've said a million times at this point, the theme for 2023 is recognizing those gaps in my education and working on filling in those gaps. And this is where I wanna invite you to also look at your programming education, if you will, try to find those gaps yourself and work on filling those in this year. I hope you enjoyed the video. Not only am I excited to see what I can accomplish this year, I'm excited to see what you guys can accomplish this year. So make sure to leave a comment down below talking about your goals for the year. Make sure you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.